day across. This time around my article in Shutter Magazine, I talk about adding texture to your photographs by, well, adding textures. And these textures can be either something you create in Photoshop using some of the built-in options or something you shoot for that purpose. And one of the things that I emphasize in the article, I think it's really important, and I'll talk about this a couple of times, is textures are everywhere. You can just walk around the block and find a crack in the pavement or peeling paint or rusted metal or a wire fence or something that could be the start of a really interesting texture. So let's take a look at some examples of how we could use these textures in Photoshop. So as an example, I want to add this texture to a photo I already have open in Photoshop. So in Photoshop, I have the document open that as you'll see is a camera raw smart object. This is also a raw file so I want to get it into Photoshop so I choose place in Photoshop from within Bridge. I could also do that directly from Photoshop. This is just a more visual way. Now at first it opens up in camera raw but frankly I don't really know how I want to adjust it yet. So I'm just going to click OK to kind of create the link between Photoshop and camera raw. Okay, I'm going to make it just a little bit larger just because there's some kind of black around the edges. Normally I wouldn't want to enlarge a texture, but in the case of working with overlay textures like this, it doesn't really matter because we're going to do something to make it look a little different. So we could try a blend mode like overlay, and it's very subtle. You can just see it here and there. Maybe multiply, and maybe lower the opacity. And I don't have a specific plan in mind. I'm just trying things, but one of the ones that a lot of people overlook because they tend to play with just blend modes and opacity is the blend if sliders. Double click on the layer and then you say this is the layer I'm on. Let's take the lighter colors and start to make those see-through. And it's very, you, quite often it's quite harsh so if you pull back to the point where it's just starting to happen then you hold down the option or alt key to split the triangle in two halves. You can do this kind of thing. And what's interesting is you can still affect the blend mode in here. So for example I could try what if I change it to multiply or darken or something completely different like divide while I'm in the middle of doing the blend if sliders. I can also take the underlying layer and start to push it through to say make the dark areas not be quite so noticeable. So I think I'm going to switch back to a mode where you may can see it a little bit better. That wouldn't be one of them. And maybe one of these ones up here would be a little better. So you can start to see a little bit more, and I'm not in any way suggesting this would be the combination I'd use. I really want you to see how I'm blending them together. When I click OK, really everything about this can be edited because I still have the blend mode here, I have the blend if sliders here, and this is a camera raw smart object, which means if I double click on it, it goes back to raw, and I could, for example, say what if I change the exposure quite dramatically but really put the contrast up a whole lot and maybe even took out the color completely to see what that would do. Now with some blend modes it's going to completely alter, see how it took away almost all of it there because there's no more color. So in this case maybe that wouldn't be the best idea but that's kind of the point is you can try this and say well, what happens if I make this switch and make that switch and now that I've done that maybe I'll go back to the blend if sliders and pull this back a bit try some different things. Again, not to suggest that this is the combination we want, because probably not, but that's kind of the thought process is use Photoshop's built-in abilities and the ability to create a camera raw smart object connection so you can go back and forth and edit the texture on the fly. Now by using these flexible techniques it means not only can you experiment but you can reuse the texture on a different photograph. Now just one more time I want to re-emphasize the importance of thinking about the concept of textures are everywhere. So last year I was teaching at the Texas School of Photography and we were outside doing a little photo shoot and as we walked back into the hotel to go to our classroom, everyone just started heading for the classroom. I was like, wait, where's everyone going? Because there's text, look at all this texture. There's that really cool wooden door and look at that cool window in the restaurant. And we started taking photographs on the way. So here's some of the photographs I took starting outside and I walked through the hotel lobby and these were just only took five or six minutes but it was looking at things a little differently, saying this isn't going to make a great photograph, and in fact some of them are blurry. And normally that would be a bad thing, but in the case of overlay texture, it doesn't really matter, because remember we're going to blend them in some way, we're going to lower the opacity, we're going to use blend if sliders, so the fact that something might be a little out of focus really isn't a big issue. 
So when you start to see the combination of the flexible methods you can use and the fact that textures are out there everywhere, I think this opens up some really interesting possibilities from a creative standpoint in Photoshop. I'm Dave Cross. We'll see you next time.